Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to the Sunday morning worship service at Mesquite Cumberland Presbyterian Church. We're so glad you're here. Let's all stand and begin our worship with God's wonderful people. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight to see all the happy faces. Praising God and in heavenly places, what a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God. God's, God's wonderful people. We're so glad to be here again and just uh, happy to see. Like the song says, we're just happy to see all the smiling faces, praising God and here to worship. Brenda and I prayed in the car before we got out this morning when we were in the parking lot. We prayed that this would be God's service. Not mine, not hers, not Sandy or Ron's or Ray. If this is God's service. We've come to worship Him not any of us, but to worship Him. And we want God to be in control. So uh, we just need to turn it over to Him, let Him be in control, okay? All right, let's go to Him in prayer. Holy God, we thank You for this season of Lent during which You invite us to come, to examine, to confess, to be renewed and healed. We have begun this journey eagerly anticipating that like Jesus in the wilderness, there are things which need to be lost so that better things may be found. Lord, grant us the courage to set aside the easy answers and quick fixes in favor of your word that penetrates and transforms us. Enable us to see past the immediate satisfaction of our wants that we may choose instead the eternally fulfilling grace of your presence. Lord, we're here today to worship you. Make our faith bold that we may trust you rather than the faults and empty promises of our age. Thank you, Lord, for allowing you to walk this Lent. Thank you for walking this Lenten journey with us. And we're so happy that we can walk with you. Let us emerge from it prepared to serve you with renewed passion and joy. Father, we pray that we could be broken before you, that all of our desires and all of our wishes and dreams could just be broken and we could just be concentrated on you. Receive our worship today, Lord, as we offer ourselves to you through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's have Ozeel come up with us. You're going to get a special blessing today just for being here. Just to 
Share the affirmation of faith with me as we continue our worship. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, please. All right, let's, let's pray together. Lord, uh, we ask you to hear our prayers, and we ask you to hear all these requests, and we pray that you would carry them up to the Father on our behalf. On this second Sunday of Lent, we reverently recall the many titles you bear, the many ways in which you serve God the Father and us. You're called Son of Man, because you were born into a humble home. Son of man, you gave yourself for us while we were yet sinners. How can we possibly look down on others less fortunate? You are recognized by a few as the Son of God because of your close walk with the Father. You challenged people to practice justice, to show mercy. And we ask that you would sensitize us to injustice and give us courage and skill in exposing and opposing it. You offered yourself to the Father as a sacrifice for sin to please Him. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Grant us your peace. You spent yourself making people whole in body and mind. Great physician, teach us to be agents of healing to the sick 
and ministers of comfort to the dying. And be near us, we pray, in our time of need. Lord, we admit that we are sinners. And in your infinite mercy, we pray that you would still accept us into your kingdom. And we pray and we ask this in the name of the one who taught us to pray after this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all body, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lent is a time for us to think about being broken before the Lord. And being broken before the Lord does not mean that you're actually broken like breaking bones. You know that. Broken before the Lord means to be in repentance, in submission to Him. So we want to talk about that today. And I want to mention a name to you. And some of you may think this was me in my younger days, but it's not. It's... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> That's Charles Haddon Spurgeon. <clears throat> Charles Spurgeon was born in 1834, and he died in 1892 at the age of 58. He was a noted English Baptist minister who preached to thousands of people in the Metropolitan Tabernacle in London, which seated 6,000 people. And he began his ministry at age 24, and for the next 34 years, he preached at Metropolitan Tabernacle to huge, huge crowds of people, and he never had any kind of a microphone, no kind of aid at all. And he was called the Prince of the Pulpit. Spurgeon published 63 volumes of sermons and in addition, he was the author of numerous books and pamphlets, including Lectures to My Students, a handbook for young preachers. And in it, he wrote this, All preachers are frail and feeble and apt to faint. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah, he, he's right. <laughs> And this included Spurgeon himself. His favorite verse was Psalm 51, 17. 
listen to this. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. And this verse, as many of you may remember, is a part of David's confession to God after he had committed adultery and murder in the incident with Bathsheba and her husband Uriah. The word broken here in Psalm 51, 17 literally means shattered. In our scripture lesson for this second Sunday in Lent, we want to read about another man who was broken before the Lord. His name was Isaiah. And it's, we want to read from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seating on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces. With two they covered their feet. And with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. <clears throat> then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the fire of the altar. And with it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. And your sin atoned for. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go. And tell this people, Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never Perceiving. What a message. What a message. Isaiah was called to be a spokesman for God. Why would God call him to such a position? What gave him such incredible depth? What gave him the stamina and courage to be God's messenger to four different kings? Uzziah, Jothan, Ahaz, Hezekiah. It was the trait that he had of breaking, being broken before the Lord, or brokenness. Here's how he describes it. <clears throat> In verse 1, Isaiah tells us that he actually saw the Lord. You may miss that if you read it too quick. Verse 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, Seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Wow. Can you imagine? He saw God. The year was 740 BC, and a great king had died. Uzziah was Isaiah's hero. He was the first king that he had served, <clears throat> and Isaiah had come to the temple. To mourn for him. And then suddenly. And with great fanfare. Jehovah God. Appeared to him in the temple. Now if this won't break you. I don't know what would. Secondly we're told. In verses 2 and 3. <clears throat> that he encountered. Strange beings called. Seraphs. Listen to the scripture. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. 
The whole earth is full of his glory. Now the word seraphs is used here to mean heavenly angels. And in Numbers 21, it is used to mean fiery serpents, signifying that they were agents of cleansing. The Hebrew word translated seraph literally means to burn. And the fact that they were calling to one another means it was antiphonal sound, back and forth. One would say it, the other side would repeat it. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And then the other side, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Wow. That is amazing in itself. But then third, <clears throat> the third thing we have here is Isaiah's response. And that's in verses 4 and 5. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. And Isaiah cried out, Woe to me! I am ruined! For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Literally, he said, I am ruined, dissolved. I'm not even here anymore. I'm, I'm just become dust. I cease to exist. <clears throat> I'm just like those around me. And my doom is sealed because I'm not holy. You know what that reminds me of? Reminds me of Job, the man Job, in Job 42, verse 6, where he said, Therefore I despise myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Or perhaps Luke chapter 5, verse 8. What did Simon Peter say? <clears throat> Simon Peter saw this. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Friends, that is brokenness. Job was broken. Peter was broken. Before the Lord. And then the fourth thing in this passage. We see is Isaiah broken before the Lord. And I love this. These verses. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand. Which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And I've always wondered if he had to take it with tongs from the altar. Why then did he put it in his hand? But. That's just me. <laughs> That's, we have to go with what the word says. Verse 7 says, With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And then, and then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah, all caught up in the moment, said, Here am I. Send me. Now, how many of us would have said that? Here am I. Send me. Now, that piece of coal stood for the full significance of the temple ritual of cleansing. It cleansed him. And it's very important for us to note that God took the initiative in the cleansing of Isaiah. God took the initiative. Isaiah didn't clean himself. Isaiah said, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. And God sent cleansing. And in verse 8, it's also interesting to see that God is seen as a king in council, which suggests the Trinity. He said, because he called himself like in a plural form. Because Isaiah is broken before the Lord. And because he's caught up in the moment. He responds enthusiastically to God's call. Here am I. Send me. And what was God's response? How did God respond to that? It was very simple. He said. Go. Now he added more to that sentence. But the main thing he said. Was go. Now, 
we should ask ourselves a question. Why was Isaiah broken? And the answer, I think, is very evident. He was broken because he saw himself as compared to God. Here's Isaiah, and he looks up and he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Wow. He was broken because he saw himself compared to God. Do you know that as Christians, people need us to be authentic models of humanity. We need to be true Christians, true disciples, but we also need to be real people. <laughs> real people. We don't have to be anything otherworldly. We need to find our place beneath the cross of Jesus and take our stand there for Him. And the only way for us to do that is if we are completely broken before Him. And that's not a simple thing. It's, it's not an easy thing. To be completely broken before God means somewhere along the line you have to go down on your knees. Now I know it's hard to do. <laughs> it's hard for me to do. I have a hard time getting down on my knees. Actually, it's not hard at all. It's the hard part is getting back up. Some of you, I think, know what I'm talking about. But you know, to be broken before God, you have to try it. I suggest the best place is beside your bed. <laughs> beside your bed. Just go down on one knee if you can. And say, God, I submit myself to you. I surrender to you. And that's how we're broken before him. Being broken is, a, is, a, is surrender. Being broken is to Admit that we're not what we should be. We're not what we want to be. But if God will help us, we can get there. We can get there. We can make it. And that, that is what Lent is all about. People ask me at times, so what, is, what is Lent anyway? Lent is observed as a period of prayer and repentance and even fasting as we attempt to draw closer to God through His Son, Jesus Christ, and become true Christians and become true disciples like God <clears throat> wants us to be. Last Sunday was the first Sunday in Lent. The 21st. And today is the second Sunday in Lent. We had to change our schedule a little bit because we missed the 14th. Uh, we, we missed uh, one Sunday because of the weather. And that brought everything to sort of a halt. <laughs> but Lent is a 40-day season that precedes Easter in many Christian denominations. The 40-day time frame is based on the period that Jesus spent in the desert fasting while being tempted by Satan. And according to the gospel accounts in Matthew and Luke, this is exactly what he did. In Western churches, Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, which was on February the 17th, and runs until Easter, this year on April the 4th. It's a period of six and a half weeks, and the Sundays are not counted as part of the 40 days. The word Lent is based on an old English word that meant springtime. Or in another rendition, it was lengthen. Lent was to lengthen, which is, means that it's the time, springtime, that leads in to spring. As we move through this holy season, 
We need to remember this, what Lent is all about. And I want us to be actively involved in preparing ourselves for the celebration of the resurrection on Easter Sunday. That's really what Lent is about. It's to get us ready for Easter. So I want you to stay with us each week <clears throat> as more of us begin together. Today we're more than we were last week. And we're going to try to emphasize Lent with our messages and our music as we move ahead through this wonderful season. I'm always reminded that Lent is a special time for the church, and it's a special time for Christians. And it's a time when we can truly identify more completely with our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. So, stay with us throughout this time. Help us to feel God's presence as we meet together to worship Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Father, for being with us. And thank you for allowing us to be here together with you. God, we pray that we could be broken before you, that we could surrender to you, and that you would receive us as your children. Help us to know, God, that you're there. May we keep our eyes on you and we ask you to keep our faith strong. Help us to continue to serve you in all that we do. For we ask it in Jesus' name for our sakes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jenkins, for leading us. <clears throat> and I want y'all to know something. The music that we do and the message that I do, um, they're not going to change. It doesn't matter if there's 14 here like we have today or if there's 40 or 400, but they're not going to change. She works just as hard on the music for you guys as you would if we had a couple of 300. And my sermons are geared for everybody, hopefully. I hope you receive them like that. So continue to talk to our folks and encourage them to come on back and, and uh, 
Brent and I are going to get a little safer tomorrow. We're going to get our vaccine, uh, our first shot tomorrow. Uh, and uh, praise the Lord. We're, we've been waiting on it since uh, January the 15th is when we registered. And we're finally getting it tomorrow. So praise the Lord for that. We're going to get safer. And we're going to try to keep everybody safe. God bless you. Let's uh, share our benediction together in unison. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. Faith, Lord, that you are good, that you are who you say you are, and that you did what you said you'd do. Hope, Lord, that you will come again and make all things right according to your word and your promise. Love, Lord, your love to us compels us to love one another. As we head out into a broken world, make us people of faith, of hope, and of love. And all of God's people say, Amen. Sing